My number one request right now is a bunny and tulip. So let's paint both together today. Taking my bright blue, light blue, and white on my mop brush, I'm doing back and forth strokes for the sky, and then dipping right into some very, very dark green for a base layer, and then dry it really good. Now I want some grass, so I'm taking a medium round brush and doing a stroke upwards. They can be tilting over because they're so heavy. Just always up, up, up. Never pull down with grass because it will look upside down and I'm going to cover the entire dark green layer there. So you can only see a little bit of it peeking through. Make sure they're all different heights. And then I'm going to take a third shade of green because in the grass are gonna be some tulips. Making a tulip leaf now, it's like a much thicker version of grass. I'm pressing down much harder than I did with my grass strokes. Some can be even coming over on top of each other because it's so heavy. Pull up and then very lightly lift up on the brush as you get towards the top or the tip to make it come to a point. And I'm gonna have them all different heights. You can even do them double wide if you want them really thick. And I'm going to fill up the backdrop. I don't wanna lose my blue in my sky necessarily, but have quite a few in there because we're gonna have quite a few tulips. You can do highlights and shading on them if you want them to look a little bit more realistic. And make sure it's dry because we're gonna start adding our tulip flowers. So I'm taking the medium round brush with some white paint and making a teardrop shape. That's the center of your tulip. And then you're gonna do another teardrop that leans to the left, but it's overlapped in the middle. And then a third teardrop shape that overlaps in the middle, leaning to the right. See that? That is a simple tulip. If you wanna make it look a little bit more realistic with layers, just add a couple more points. See, I'm going to add a point to each of those leaning ovals or teardrops and then two points in the middle as well. And we're going to practice this a couple more times. So there's the teardrop shape. There's one overlapping leaning to the right and another one overlapping leaning to the left and add some extra points at the very top to each of those. The middle one's kind of optional, depends how many layers you want it to look like it has. And notice how I'm putting each flower at a different height. Whatever direction you point that center first teardrop, that's gonna be the direction it's leaning. Some of them when they get tall do lean to the right or the left, so that's up to you and I'm adding those extra points as well. Notice we are using white for these first because there are so many different color tulips, but they're always so vibrant. So you want it to give it the best chance you have to make a vibrant color. It's basically like priming it. And then before we go much further, I am going to add some stems. So I know tulips have different color stems, but I added a little bit of brown and white to these because I'm thinking of the pale stemmed ones. Now, before going any further, let's start this bunny. So I'm taking another medium round brush. This is the makeup version of it. And I'm taking some nutmeg and white. I did an oval for the bunny body and filled it in. And then a small oval at the top, almost like one of those two ball snowmen, but it's leaning to the left. And then I'm gonna connect his neck a little bit more by curving it where it meets, just like that. And I had the top one leaning to the left because I want him to be sniffing a tulip. So I am adding another bud right there. And don't forget the stem. Oh, that's going to be cute. Now pick the colors you want for your tulips. I know there's so many different kinds. I'm doing bright pink and red together. And I'm filling them in the exact same way I created them. But because we did that white layer, it really stands out. And then while it's still wet, I'm taking white and I'm adding some highlights. So fill each one in and then take the white, especially highlight at the top and along the edges, especially where it overlaps so you can see the definition. And I know craft paint sometimes has very uh, thin paint, so you may have to do a second coat to get them really, really vibrant. If you want, I'll do that later on mine. Uh, but just get a base coat on there. So here, I'm even gonna do some purple ones. Purple and add a little bit of red in there too. That's a little bit of a thinner paint, but still add the color and the highlights to each one. There we go. It does help to add the highlights while it's wet to help it blend. Okay, let's work on the bunny again. So let's do his ears. I'm going to do a long oval now for his first ear. That's on the other side of him. 
highlight that a little bit and then I'm gonna do a second ear that's flopped over so I'm going to do a smaller oval like that it's in towards his head a little bit more not right on the edge and then I'm going to do a second teardrop oval that's leaning down to the right on the end of that one because it's flopped over on that side I know it did cover up one of my tulips but you know what that's okay because he would have some things behind him too so don't be afraid to put things in front of other things. That looks more natural. While we're here, let's do the center of his ear that would be showing in pink, and then add a little bit more tan and white curved over there to make it look like it's inside his ear. Perfect. Okay, so I'm taking my medium round brush again. That's the makeup version because it's almost like a smaller mop brush. It has a flat end and adds really cute texture. I think it almost looks like fur. You could use a dry brush or a flat brush for this as well, but I'm adding highlights to his midsection with it, and I'm also taking some nutmeg brown, the darker uh, color, and layering that over top of the white more towards the bottom of him for shading. Let's do some on his neck as well because there would be a little bit more shading there. I just alternate light and dark in different areas to make it look like he has texture. See, he, he would have a little bit more of a brighter head there too. I'm gonna shade his ears a little bit, even with a detail brush, add some darker the nutmeg to the sides of his ears, highlights to the edges, and the back of this ear that's away from the sun. There we go. And then with the detail brush, right now I think he kind of looks like a gourd, so I'm going to make the edges of him look fluffy. Just pull out some little tiny lines with white and nutmeg just along the edges. Don't worry about the bottom of him so much, but especially along the sides of his body. That will just make him look a little bit more like a living bunny. And while we got this here, let's do some white little hair coming in from his ear the inside of it and shade that a little bit more and can't forget the top oh it looks like I could pet him now so cute all right and then when you give him a face honestly you're probably gonna have to play with it like I did because it's so important it is his personality but I did a little black oval for an eye played with his nose gave him a little smile and little dots beside his nose and on top of his eyes so I could give him whiskers almost like eyelashes and uh, his whiskers coming out don't forget white in his eye i did check to see what pink looked like but honestly black one out i thought that looked a little bit more natural make his eye even a little bit bigger just keep working with, with it until he looks cute i say and then i can't help it i have to add a couple white highlights to him and then i'm gonna go back to the flowers remember i said we're gonna do a second coat because i want them to be very vibrant i'm going to make the highlights more vibrant and add some color towards the bottom as a second Second layer oh look how much more vibrant that is and at the very end I like to go in with just pure white then and make the highlights really stand out it depends on you how vibrant you want them to be but I like to do that to everything at the very end and don't forget to connect your flowers to the stem it doesn't have to be super noticeable but on the edge of the curve at the bottom just pull a line into the stem on either side see how I did that that's just gonna make them look a little bit more more put together add some extra leaves if you need to and then it's a lot of green so I'm gonna brighten it up with some brighter green brighter green grass in the front and you thought I was gonna forget the tail didn't you I'm taking a fine sea sponge with a little bit of white as a final touch and bouncing in a tail up to you how big you want it I want it to be pretty big and fluffy oh it's so cute that's my favorite part of any bunny picture perfect all right more highlights I'm gonna take some bright green and highlight some of the stems and the leaves and as a final touch add some white strokes even little tiny white highlights on the stems and the leaves will really make it pop it's up to you how many and you do and there you go have fun if you enjoyed this tutorial you can follow me here on tiktok instagram facebook and youtube for more